everybody, Tay, Libby, and Taylor. Taylor. I just recorded for her last period. Libby and Taylor. Five, six is what we're going to do today. There's a lot of examples, um, but these kind of go, kind of go pretty quick. Um, so starting with example one, we are solving log and uh, exponential equations. Now, when you have an exponential function and you're trying to solve, like when I have like this guy right here, you can use a log to solve it. When I have a log function, you can use an exponent to solve it, okay? Those two are inverses of each other. They undo one another. So if you ever get to a point where you're like stuck on an exponential function, use a log to get it out. If you're ever stuck on a log function and you're trying to solve for x, use an exponential function to get it out. What? No. You don't need to know that yet. Cool. We'll talk about it later. Example one. Solving this equation. All right. Now, there are uh, two different strategies that you can use. So check out example one. This is what we're solving versus example two. This is what we're solving. Okay. They both look very similar to each other. Like there's something equal to something else. You have exponents involved. Okay. Here is one strategy. Okay. If you have eight and two as your bases. Okay. These are called bases. Bases. They are the base of your exponential function. So one of them is eight, the other one is two. Eight and two kind of correspond to one another. They're very nice. And what I can do is I'm just gonna let the, the right side chill for a second. I'll use a different color. I'm gonna let the right side chill for just a second. I'm gonna leave that as two to the x plus one power, okay? But eight can be rewritten as a base of two. Did you know that? Eight is the same thing as two to the third power, right? 2 to the third power is the same thing as 8. Now, there's also an x on the outside. I'm just going to pull that x down. But I'm ta basically taking 8 and I'm replacing it with 2 to the third power. Do you see how that works? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 2 to the third power to the x power. This is 2 to the 3x power, like, like Luke just said, right? And then I have 2 to the x plus 1 power. So I'm just going to combine that 3 and x. You are multiplying here. This is multiply. Okay. Then, what happens? The twos go away. My bases are the same. So I have 3x equals x plus 1. Okay, and then I just solve for x from there, right? All right, so how do I solve for x? Like, what are you going to do first? Subtract x. Subtract x from here over to here. What's 3x minus x? 2x. My algebra kids would say 3 because you're subtracting the x off. Don't do that. Okay, so 2x equals 1. Then divide by 2. So x is 1 half. Uh, if I were taking this on a test, I would plug one half in here and see if that comes out to be equivalent to each other, okay? Right? Like you can plug that back in to see if that's right, okay? So x is one half. That is called the change of base strategy, okay? Now, the change of base strategy does not work for every problem, as in the next one, right? My bases are 5 and 2. Can 5 be written as like 2 to some power? Like 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8. I cannot get 5 out of that, right? So when that happens, okay, this is an exponential function. And when I'm stuck on an exponential function, what I do is I use the opposite of exponents, which is log, right? We're going to use a log, okay? Now, here's what happens. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other, okay? It doesn't matter. I'm going to put a little star. I can either use... L-O-G, which is like log base 10, or I can use L-N. For solving this problem, it does not matter which one you use because they're equivalent to, like, not equivalent to each other, but like if I do it to both sides, it doesn't matter which one I use, right? I could use L-O-G or L-N. I'm going to use L-N just because later on down below, we're going to use L-N a lot, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put L-N in front of each side. So I have L-N of that and L-N of 2. Here's what it looks like ln of 5 to the x power equals ln of 2. Now, you don't necessarily have to have these in parentheses because, you, I mean, you don't. Uh, but that's what that looks like. We're taking ln of that and ln of that. We did it to both sides, so we're good, okay? All right, now, this x that's up here on the top, he can go somewhere in front, okay? So we the x comes down in front, so I have x, and this is really like times ln of 5, equals ln of 2. I'm not going to write it in parentheses this time. x times ln 5 equals ln 2. If I want to get x by itself, then divide by ln 5. Okay, divide by ln 5. Okay, now, x 
is ln of 2 divided by ln of 5. You, this thing is not the same as, no, not the same as an ln of 2 over 5. Okay? It's ln of the top, close the parentheses on the 2, and then ln of the bottom, close the parentheses of the 5. Okay? That is not the same thing as ln of 2 over 5. That's not the way that it works. Okay? So you have to literally do ln of 2 divided by ln of 5 and get the answer. What do you get? 0.43. What? 0 0.43. 0 0.43. Give me like four decimal places. 07. 07? Okay. X equals 0 0.4307. Got it? Make sense? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so when you have an exponential function that you can't change the basis of, you use a log. Now, I could have done that. I could have LN'd both sides here instead of changing the base. I could have done that to the 8 and the 2. You don't have to because you have an easier method. You could have changed the base. But I could have literally done LN both sides of the 8 and the 2. It, that, you know, that, that, that method will always work. Got it? Okay, I could have done that as well. Okay, let's go down to this one. Here we go. Solve the equation. My bases are 2 and my bases are 3. Can I change the base or do I have to LN? You have to LN. Okay, so let's LN both sides. I can't make like 3 is not like 2 to the second power or 2 to the third power or whatever. So I have to LN both sides. All right, now when I LN both sides, the next step is this exponent's going to come down in front. This exponent's going to come down in front, okay? This is the same process as what we did above, but a little messier. Chase, put your phone away. Okay. 4x minus 1 is going to come down in front times ln of 2 equals 1 minus x is going to come down in front times ln of 3. Got it? Is this confusing? Like what I just did? Okay, because the ln is there, you can move them down in front, right? Only because the ln is there, you can move it down in front. Why are you using ln instead of log? It doesn't matter which one you use. You can use either one. So if you did log, like uh, ln, ln of 2 over ln of 5 is what we just got done doing, you will get the same answer if you type in log of 2 divided by log of 5. Okay, it does not matter which one you do. What? LN. What? So I prefer ln because down here when we have like e, stuff that involves e, E goes away when you insert an ln in front of it. So I'm just getting you used to using ln instead of log because... When there is an E, you have to use LN in order to cancel out. Does that make sense? That's why I prefer LN over log. Because when there's E's involved, you want to use LN. Because log, base 10, and E don't cancel. LN and E will cancel. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, so here's this. So now our exponents are down in front. Okay, now we got to figure out how to solve for X. I don't know. What would you like to do? But then I'll have like one minus x over here on the bot. I don't want the x on the bottom. Because I don't. I don't know. Like let's divide. Okay, let's divide the ln of two over here. Ln two. Let's divide him off. Like this whole thing is one chunk right here, okay. technically, yeah. Okay, so I've got 4x minus 1 equals uh, 1 minus x times, uh, what is ln of 3 divided by ln of 2, if I just do that? 1.5849. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got that going on, right? I could have left the ln of 2 here and figured that out as a decimal and distributed. Figure this out as a decimal and distributed, right? It doesn't matter. You could do that, Okay. Um, I'm going to leave 4x minus 1 here, and let's distribute this through. 1 so 1.5849 minus 1.5849x, right? Okay. All right, so I've got four pieces. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Two of them have x's, two of them don't, right? So let's get the x's together. Let's add the 1.5849x here. And add the 1.5849x here. Okay, I'll do this all in just like little steps. So 4x plus 1.5849x would be 5.5849x minus 1 equals. This is all messy. Are you guys following what I'm doing? I'm just combining like terms now, but just with really ugly numbers. 
Okay, so the x's are all on the left side. Now what should we do? Add the 1. Okay, so 5.5849x equals 2.5849. Then? Why do we do so many decimal places? So we do so many decimal places because, like, when we're doing, like, the intermediate steps, we want to use a lot of decimal places. Otherwise, our answer at the end is going to be even further off than what the actual is. Does that make sense? So we use a lot of decimals in the middle so that we have, like, really good answer at the end. Zero point, what? Four, six, two, eight. Four, six, two, eight. Cool. There you go. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So same process as before, but just a little uglier to solve, you know? And you could do that a bunch of different ways. I could have moved the ln of 3 over here and divided by ln of 3 and then distributed that through your 4 and your 1. It doesn't matter which route you do, okay? Like, there's a bunch of different ways to solve for it. So at this point, once you get it to this point, you're just doing algebra after that. Like, you're just doing all your arithmetic and adding and getting x together and all that good stuff, okay? Can I ask you sure. Could you have divided 4x minus 1 by 1 minus x? Yes, but like your 1 minus x, we don't want that on the bottom because then you'll have an x on the top and an x on the well, bottom. Could you have divided 1 minus x? Divided by 4x. But then you have an x on the bottom again. I mean, like you could, like technically that's legal to do, but it would just make solving for x maybe a little bit harder. But yeah, it's legal. Like that, that you know, I mean, like that's, that, that's, that would work, but it just would be kind of ugly. Okay. I'm going to skip example four. We're going to go down to example five and let's talk about radiocarbon dating. Okay. Um, this is a radioactive decay. The skeleton of a mastodon has lost 58% of its original carbon-14. I don't know if you guys have your little note cards, but this is radioactive decay. Um, a equals P times 0.5 to the, uh, it's like T over, did we use H or K? I can't remember. We use K. K? Okay, whatever it is. That's the formula for radioactive decay. So after amount, before amount, 0.5. Why do we use 0.5? Half-life, Half right? Okay. T is the time. And K is the, like, half-life of that sub substance, okay? So they will tell you the half-life of carbon-14 is however many years, and that's how long it takes for that to split in half. They have to give you this number, given to you, um, except when they don't, I will give it to you, okay? Um, so here they don't tell you what the half-life of carbon-14 is. Does anybody remember? I think I had you write it down on your note card because sometimes they won't give it to you. 5730. 5730 years is the half life. So that's going to be the K that we're going to use for carbon 14. Hang on, I have okay. a question. What? what is a mastodon? A mastodon, we looked this up. It's like a. Bro, you like, A mastodon is like a. It's it's not a mammoth, but it's like close to that. That's what it is. I don't care. Sure. Look at a picture. I don't know. Here. Mastodon. They won't be able to see this on the thing. Yeah. You've never seen a mastodon? No. What are like, you, an idiot? Mastodon. Like, like, well, I don't think they can see this. Blue. Images, mastodon. Yeah. She has one in her basement. There you go. It's like a mammoth. Like, you watch, I, it's mastodon. Like, I that's what he is. That's a mammoth. It's, yeah, I don't know, It's but it's a particular type of mammoth, I guess. Mastodon. Anyway, so there's that. All right. The skeleton of a mastodon has lost. <laughs> underline the word lost. lost. It has lost 58% of its original carbon-14. They do not give me values for A and P, so we get to make them up as long as they're in the 58% ratio, okay? So what would you like to use for A and P? What, what would you like to start with? A is 42. I'm 32. 42. 42? Okay. P is 103. If it has lost 58%, how much would you like to start with? Would you like to start with 100? Let's say you start with 100. If it's lost 58% of that, now we are at 42. So, like, let's say it's 100 pounds. It's going to be way more than 100 pounds. But let's say it's 100 pounds to start with, and it's lost 58%. Now it's at 42 pounds, like, decaying-wise, right? Like, that's how that works. Okay? 0.5 to the when did the mastodon die? What are we solving for? T. This is what we're solving for. T over 57.30. Okay, all right, so I'm, I'm trying to solve for T. I'm trying to get this out of here. 
in the past, we would have questions like this and we would plug and play until we figured out what it was, right? What it was close to. Now we can actually figure this out, okay? First thing we're going to do, though, is I'm going to divide by 100. Okay, 42 divided by 100 is 0.42. And then this is 0.5 to the t over 5730. Got it? Okay, my two bases, even though they're decimals, are this guy and this guy. Can I make them be the same number? No, so what are you going to do? Put an ln in front of both sides, okay? And by putting that ln there, the very next step allows me to take this dude and move him in the front. Okay, by putting the ln there, I can move that exponent down. So I've got ln of 0.42 just chilling on the one side equals t over 5730 times the ln of 0.5. Got it? Like, do you see how that works? I can just move that exponent down in front. Okay, now what would you like to do? I'm trying to solve for t, so I've got to get everything else going. Divide by ln 0.5. Got it. Okay, I like that idea. Divide by ln 0.5. Okay, so what's ln of 40.42 divided by ln of 0.5? Something. 1.2515. Okay, keep that number in your calculator. To solve for t, the last thing I need to do is Multiply by, multiply by 5730. Multiply by 5730. Do you see how that works? 7171. 7171. What does that mean? Yes. That's how long ago it, it died. So years. It's been dead for about 7,000 years. Okay? It has, it has split in half 1.25 times, right? It's half-life. It is split in half 1.25 times. Okay? Which equates to about 7171 years. Yeah? Happy with that? Does that make sense? All right, let's do another one. This one is compound interest. And this is compounded quarterly. The equation for that is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Do you remember what these variables all mean? R is rate. What's N? Number of, years. Number of times it's compounded. Okay? All right. If 3,000 is to be invested, where does 3,000 go? P. P. So 3,000 is invested at 8%. 1 plus uh, interest rate is how much? What do I put in for R? 0 0.08. 0 0.08. It has to go in as a decimal, right? 8%, okay? Compounded quarterly. That means N is 4. 4 quarters. And 4 goes here also for the N at the top. In how many years? What are we solving for? Time. time. We don't know time, so I'm going to leave that as T. Will it be worth 10680 That goes... In for A, in the past, we would just plug and play to figure out what T is. Now we're not going to do that anymore, okay? Um, I'm going to do what first? What would you like to do first? Divide by 3,000, okay? What's that divided by 3,000? Like 3 point something. 3.56. 3.56, okay. Mm -hmm. Equals, and I'm going to simplify. 1 plus, what's 0 0.08 divided by 4? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, so this would be 1.02 to the 4T power. Got it? All right, can you make these two be the same base? Those are my bases. Can you be them, make them the same amount of number? No, so we're just going to ln both sides. Am I going too fast? Nope. Okay, by LNing both sides, what's the next step? Move the 4T. Move the 4T down in front. So I have ln of 3.56 equals 4T times ln of 1.02. Okay? Solving for T, what, what are you going to divide next? Divide. divide by ln of 1.0. It's the same steps every time, just with different numbers, right? Divide by ln of 1.02. Okay. So I have equals 4t equals whatever that number is. What's the first number? But before you divide by 4. And we got it? 64.1208. 64.1208. Okay. And then that's equal to 4t. Divide by 4, you should get like 16 point something. 16.03. 16.03. And that is years. So it will take that many years at an 8% interest rate for the however much, 3,000 to turn into 10,000. That's like a pretty big jump, but you will be, you will never find 8% anywhere. Like, never. I don't know.
like even in a st well you might in the stock market I don't know but you could lose that much just as easily right I don't know anyway 16 years for it to turn into that got it all right let's see what we've got left a lot, a lot. Yeah. let's do a couple more and then we'll we'll stop We'll do a couple more and then we'll stop. What? We'll do one more. We'll do one more and then we'll stop. We should do one on our homework. One more. Yeah, yeah. Let's do one on our homework. We do number one now. One on this and then one on our homework. Something that we've already done. Or seventeen because we don't have. Okay, and then we'll finish the rest. We'll finish the backside tomorrow. How about that? Um, but we'll do one on your homework. Sure. Okay. Go to which one? Eighteen. Eighteen. You might need your note card for this section that tells you your equations, right? You may need your note card. Which one? I don't even know what my notes are. I honestly don't even know. Oh, 18 is a good one. Okay. Strontium. Str strontium. Strontium 90. Whatever that element is, I have no idea. Okay. We're talking about half-life. The equation for half-life is A equals P times 0.5 to the T over K. All right. It loses 2.5% each year. Okay, so we got to pick numbers for A and P. What do you want to start with for P? I always start with 100, sure, or 1. You can start with 1 or you can start with 100, it doesn't matter. I'll start with 100. If it loses 2.5%, what's it at now? 97.5, that's what the after amount is, all right? Then I've got 0.5 to the, what are we solving for? What is the half-life? We're solving for K. What's T? One. Each year. That means T is one. Mm -hmm. So if one year has elapsed, uh, that's what T is. Okay? All right. Now we have to solve for K. All right? In the past, we would just plug and play, but we're not going to do that anymore. Let's divide by 100 first. Okay? Now, what you don't want to do, what's illegal, by the way, uh, is you cannot multiply these two together because this one has an exponent on it and the 100 does not. Does that make sense? You cannot multiply those together. Okay, so you have to divide off the 100 first. So divide 100, divide 100. That moves to the decimal place. 97.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.975. 975, okay. That moves his decimal place over. Equals 0 0.5 to the 1 over k power. All right, my two bases are 0 0.5 and 0 0.975. We try to make them the same number if we can, but we can't. So we have to ln, 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 all right? Then what? Um, 1 over k comes down in front. So I have ln of 0.975 equals 1 over k comes down in front times ln of 0.5. Okay, now what would you like to do? Divide the ln of 0.5 over. Okay, divide by ln of 0.5. 0 0.0365, 0 0.0365 equals 1 over k. Okay, now how do I solve for k when he's in the bottom like that? Okay, so if I take him times k, k is now over here on this side. Yeah, right, right, right. So k is over here. So I have k times this thing equals 1. I'm going to divide by 0 0.0365. Divide by 0 0.0365. Okay, equals whatever 1 divided by 0 0.0365 is what? 27.37785125. 27 point, give me 2 to 2. 37. 37. Years? 38. 38. 38. 38. 27.38. Years. Okay, the half life of carbon 14 was 5,730 years. This is a very active, like, element where its half-life is like splitting in half way, way, way sooner than that, right? This is like very degradable. What? What? It's a very radioactive material. Then it's a good thing that it splits in half really fast because like it dissipates very, very quickly. It's very unstable. It's very unstable. That's why it dissipates very, like it's, it's, it's atomic elements and composites are very unstable, meaning that it like dissipates and disintegrates very quickly. Well, 27 years is not a very long half-life. Correct, yeah. Sure, yeah, very good. Okay, good? Have you gotten the half-life of Thank God we haven't. It's 
sorts of things. Huh. Interesting. 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 Okay, there you go. All right. Tomorrow we'll do the backside and any other questions that you have. You can start working on the front part of this. Okay, goodbye people on the video.